What's up, everybody? Welcome to a new episode of the Busy Life Podcast. My name is Julie, and today I've brought back my bestie with us, Shoshana. And we are going to be talking about nutrition again. So we had our first episode about nutrition, gosh, how, how long ago was that? I think it was in July. Oh my God. Okay. So it's been a while since we talked about nutrition, but we did promise everybody that we would come back for part two. And the reason that we're doing it now is because recently, I don't even know if I've told you this yet, Shoshana, but recently I've announced that I am going to be offering personal training, like workout programs and nutrition coaching and accountability coaching through, um, I can't say where yet, but I'm going to be offering those programs. I'm going to be, I've just started talking about them on my Instagram now. And I was going to ask you about that. That's what I'm, I was going to ask you about that. Cause I saw it today. Yeah. It's a brand new thing in the works now. Um, but basically you can get, so for my listeners, for my previous clients who I haven't seen in a while, or my current clients that I still see now, like there's new programs out that I am going to be tailoring for people based on whether it's workouts, whether it's nutrition, whether it's accountability, like whatever it is. Um, there's going to be a lot more information to come, but that's a little plug that I wanted to put in there. And the reason I've decided to come up with these is because I always get a lot of questions about workouts. I get a lot of questions about life, which is why I've done this podcast and then about nutrition which is what led us to the first episode on nutrition. But recently there's been a lot of buzz about plant-based diets and a lot of buzz about incorporating more plants into your life and high protein, but don't forget your carbs, but also live a balanced lifestyle. So it's just been really crazy. And as a certified nutrition coach, I just want to be able to help people however I can and I like to do my research, you know, I like to read, I like to watch TV shows, all like educational style stuff, all about nutrition, personal training, whatever it is. So this show was on Netflix and it's called You Are What You Eat. And the first person I texted was Shoshana. And I said to her, you need to watch the show because basically this show is all, all convincing of why you need to eat a vegan diet. And I think that I will just let, I'll let you go first on like what your thoughts were like when I first texted you and, you know, what you thought about when you were watching it. But basically the, the synopsis of it is that it's a study done on a bunch of different sets of twins, like 25 sets of twins, but we only really follow four sets of twins. And they have one twin do a all vegan diet for eight weeks and then they have a twin do a omnivore diet which is like including meat and vegetables um for eight weeks as well and because they're twins they wanted to see if their dna changes in any way they want to see which twin loses weight faster which twin gains muscle faster which twin this which twin that so i texted shoshana and i was like you need to watch this show this is really like right up our alley, like making people work out, eat well, whatever, teaching them about healthy lifestyles. And I hadn't finished it when I texted Shoshana. So I didn't know how it would end, but I'm going to pause there and let Shoshana talk about <laughs> what she thought. So when you first texted me, I was like, okay, I definitely have to watch because I don't really think about like a vegan diet very often like I very much eat a lot of meat a lot of dairy like in my head I'm kind of like vegan no like I don't I it's not for me so I was like oh that's so interesting like I should watch this like I should see like what this experiment does like what if it really makes a difference like is this something like I should actually think about more often um and then at and I will say like I think the documentary had really really great points about being vegan and things that it can do for your body and things that it can help you with. Um, but I do think that there were some flaws in the experiment where, you know, they have the people go on the diet and then they also have them start to exercise. 
And I think that they're going to lose weight either way because they started to exercise. So like it would have been better if they took people who were already doing proper strength training and proper workouts, keeping them on that same routine and just changing the diet variable. I think that would have probably like been a more accurate experiment. Yeah. And the purpose of it was really to see not only, you know, who did better and what, but there was a very clear direction of this is why you should go vegan. Now there's been, let me just give you guys some backstory. There was a time in my life when I did try to go vegan because I'm not, uh, what is the word? I'm not, oh, I'm lactose intolerant. I was, I don't know what I was trying to say. I'm not. <laughs> dairy allergy. I don't have a dairy allergy. There was a time when I also thought I had a dairy allergy, but no, I don't have a dairy allergy, but I'm lactose intolerant. I can only handle so much dairy before it becomes too much. And I think that in itself is where a lot of America struggles. And something that they said in the show is that the worst diet is the standard American diet, which stands for the sad diet. Now I would say I do agree with that because basically classic American diet includes fried foods like chicken nuggets, French fries, sugary drinks, you know, hefty, greasy burgers and milkshakes. And I know a lot of people hear that they're like, not always, but like, yes, because those are all the commercials for chips sodas. I mean, when you think of the Super Bowl, nobody's promoting the carrots and ranch. Like everybody is promoting the Doritos and the Cheetos and the Pepsi and the Sprite. And it's like, that's just what it is in America. That's what we promote. That's what's on the TVs. That's what's on sale at the grocery store. And that's just, it's, it's quite frankly sad. <laughs> so I understood where it was go coming from at first. And at first I was like, okay, yes. Like we absolutely need to be incorporating more fruits, more vegetables. And I was hooked as well. Cause I was like, I'm so excited to watch what happens to these twins now uh, first before I should even continue with this this is like not sponsored by the show at all this is just quite frankly the two of us having an open conversation about it because since I get a lot of nutrition questions I thought that this documentary really opened a door to a whole different conversation that we can have so no this is not connected to the show this is not connected to Netflix you know and also a disclaimer I always like to say is that I'm not like Shoshana and I are not physicians. We are not medical professionals. Like we are just two best friends having a conversation on this podcast with you. So don't change anything unless we've talked to a doctor. However, the things we are about to say are pretty standard recommendations that you probably will hear from your doctor. So I'm all for it. And I'm listening to it. And I'm like, yes, there's a lot of Americans that really need to be working on incorporating more fruits, incorporating more vegetables, swapping out, you know, greasy meat for lean meat. You know, if you can get the, if you can try to get like the 90% lean meat rather than like the 85% or just like little changes you could be making, please try that. But something- That's the other thing. I, I do feel like the, the documentary didn't really account for the fact that people don't always choose the worst option. Like the American diet is- Sad. However, people do buy lean cuts of meat. People do buy reduced fat dairy. And I feel like that part was kind of overlooked. Yeah. So the big push of this show was vegan, vegan, vegan. You have to, right. be, to be healthy. And while vegan lifestyle is healthy, it's not the only way. And I just wish that there was a way that it could be heard. And I know there's a lot that comes to it. So we've got like a lot of layers we need to unpack in this episode. So just kind of follow along with us one step at a time. So we're at the beginning and they don't even mention vegan veganism. We're just on like fruits and vegetables and how you need to be eating a healthy diet with lean meat. So the person doing the omnivore diet is on like a healthy omnivore diet. And the person on the vegan diet is on a healthy vegan diet. We're following these twins and I'm not, I'm not loving the twins. Okay. Because they're not fully committed. They had never, oh no, the boys did work out, didn't they? Yes. The boys did the, the set of boy twins. They were, I think they like 
were had been in the gym a long time like they yes. were regularly strength training yes there was a set of young boy twins who young male twins who were I would say the most reliable in this because they were the ones who had already been doing this they were willing to make these changes they were excited to make the changes blah 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 the other three sets of twins that we follow there nothing against them but it was just like you didn't know if they were fully committed or not when they would have their check-ins they would even admit that there was things that they didn't do and if you're going to make a show about this i just feel like you kind of have to have people who are committed and people who are yeah good. otherwise it's like what is the point of doing the experiment for a show to convince people to consider a vegan diet if you're not 100 percent certain that the people you're experimenting with are really following along that's the problem with human exper experiments is right. that there's a lot of room for error and a lot yeah. of room for life to happen where you could get sick or you have a wedding and things happen. But honestly, that's important to note because nutrition is something to think about even when you're at all these life events. And it's not to say that you can't enjoy the cake or that you can't enjoy your night out. But those things happen and the, the point of it is that you need to be coming back to it and you need to move on from it and you need to say, okay, you know what? I messed up today, but tomorrow's going to be a better day. And I don't think they've kind of, they didn't really make it seem like, hey, we're just trying to have these healthy lifestyles. It was very strict and that's not something that I would ever want to promote to my own clients. Yeah, so, I, I agree. I think that they were very wishy-washy about it and it didn't help the the point <laughs> no I mean anyway we'll move on from that part because otherwise we'll go on a whole rant about yeah. how you need to not be so 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 strict but I get it they were doing a study they needed to stick to it if you're gonna do a study make sure that you are committed to it otherwise when it comes to real life just know that things are gonna ebb and flow but at the end of the day if you have a goal it is up to you to stick to it the other thing is then the second episode comes out and now it's all about not just like fruits and vegetables and like incorporating more plants into your diet. It's now like all about animal cruelty and where your, your meat comes from. And I will say this part was really upsetting. I did not know where a lot of my meat came from. And I remember one of the first things I texted Shoshana was that I don't know how to know if I'm buying good quality meat. Yeah, and like I wish they would have, they didn't provide good information on, they gave a lot of information on what the problem was and how it's, you know, not, your meat isn't coming from where you think it is or we don't know where it's coming from, we don't understand, but then they didn't provide a lot of information on how to make a better choice when buying meat and how to buy meat that's better or raised better. And something that I want to make sure people know, at least from what I took away from it, if you choose to have a vegan lifestyle, that's totally fine. If you choose to have an omnivore lifestyle, that's fine too. I will say though, like one thing that like Shoshana and I said is that we will try to be more mindful of where we buy our meat. Something we learned is that when cows burp, they burp this chemical or gas into the air that then gets stuck into the environment and it's like this whole thing I'm not crazy even, cycle yes I'm not even qualified to be able to go through the whole thing <laughs> but there is a lot that was bad oh the worst part was when they were talking about and I think this was in like the third episode um pig farm so they went over oh. like they, they went over, so gross. you know, all the cows, the chickens, the, the pigs, the, the salmon farm. The salmon. That was crazy. Guys, please be careful where you buy your meat and who you're supporting from, because this, this part I think impacted me the most. I, I was not convinced to go vegan, However, I am convinced that I need to be way better careful of where I buy my meat because this was disgusting. I mean, do you want to tell them about the salmon? So essentially, 
or about any of it, any of it. I'm buying salmon now. I will look for the sockeye salmon versus the Atlantic salmon because what wild caught yeah yes yes thank you wild caught because of all the dyes that are added in and they literally had paint chips to show the color that they want to dye the salmon Mm. for like unwild caught salmon and all of these fish that they were showing had like uh like blisters and scabs and like those are just like fish that they'll go ahead and use like they might have diseases <laughs> like they were disgusting and people are buying those salmon yeah from the grocery store like from your local giant from your yep. subway from your your Publix, from wherever so if you're not buying the proper salmon chicken beef any of it like you could be purchasing a diseased animal and that's yeah, and they said it. i think don't quote me on this but i think it was like one in five or something like that packs of chicken had e coli in it at the grocery store they had one of the sets of twins prepare like the chicken what was it like their favorite way to prepare chicken or something yeah and they put this chemical on the chicken where if you put a black light on it you can find if there's a coli or some kind of ke- like diseases on it well you can you can trace he put basically like a like a liquid or something on the chicken that if you put a black light on you can see it so it was showing that when they were cooking and moving around the kitchen that they were transferring that liquid essentially all around the cooking space which is essentially saying when you're cooking with chicken you're moving this all around the kitchen even though you think maybe you washed your hands, but then in turn, you could be transferring diseases all around your kitchen. So you've got like E. coli contaminated chicken and a E. coli contaminated kitchen. You've got fatty salmon, which is not high because salmon is high in omega-3s. It's one of the Mm -hmm. best fish that you should be eating. However, you need to be eating wild caught salmon that is not stuffed with antibiotics or shoved in the salmon farm that lives in this like net in the ocean, not even Mm -hmm. like swimming freely, caught it on a boat, put like, you know, threw it over the boat. No, it's like lives in this little net in the ocean. And when you buy it, like Shoshana said, it's diseased. It's like missing an eye. It's got like lumps on it. And then when you cut it, it's super fatty and disgusting. And I'll tell you what, I watched this video of this guy cooking butter salmon the other day. And I was like, oh, this looks so good. He cut into that salmon and that salmon looked just like the fatty pieces that we saw on this show. Really? Like, no. And then I think, didn't they take a piece of that fatty salmon and they were like cooking it and they were like, yeah, I wouldn't even feed this to the dog. Well, this guy on Facebook almost did. So I would say that was the most like mind blowing part For sure. because personally, this is a huge thing. And we kind of touched on it last time. Your protein intake is very important. A lot of people will fight you on the fact that you don't need that much protein. And according to the research, you need at least 30% of your daily caloric intake to be protein. And protein is one of the top, is one of your three macronutrients. So you have carbs, fats, and proteins. And yes, fruits and vegetables fit in there because they are carbs. And nuts fit in there. Like all of your food groups fit in these in these macro categories. And you cannot neglect a category, just like you cannot neglect a food group. So are there vegan alternatives? Absolutely. There's chickpeas, there's black beans, there's tofu, there's tempeh. There's a lot of other ways you can get your protein in. And if you however, <laughs> however, I know, I know there, there is you choose to do a vegan alternative, a vegan meat alternative, not chickpeas, of course, um, or beans. That's obviously a more natural alternative, but the vegan meat alternatives are 
stuffed with other ingredients. Yep. Seed oils, other fats, just other chemicals when you're reading the label that you don't know what they are. So they didn't talk about that really. Right. And so it's just frustrating because nutritiously, a turkey burger that's like 99% lean turkey meat with, you know, feta, which is a, you know, full dairy cheese and spinach and onions, like that is a much better quality meal than to have a processed burger filled with things in it that you can't even pronounce. Yet, you know, in this turkey burger, you picked meat that is free of probiotics. It's like a clean meat. It has no added fat. It's a great source of protein. It's got 26 grams of protein to it. And then there's this processed burger. And even though you're trying, you know, you're trying not to eat the animals, you're trying not to eat the processed foods, or you're trying not to eat the bad quality meat, you're, you're better off just having a black bean burger, or you're better off just not even buying that processed food, because that's just as bad for you. Yeah, at the end of the day, that's pretty much junk too. Because if you compare some of the ingredients that are in some of these vegan alternatives to stuff that's in like typical frozen food at the store they're kind of the same and there's some of the same ingredients in there that you don't really want to be eating so often the whole point that i think really should have come across from this besides just forcing a vegan diet because that was the very clear message at the end they were very, they were trying to show that people who had a vegan diet were going to live longer which i'm sure is true to some extent people who eat more fruits and vegetables and eat whole foods will live longer no no doubt than people yeah. who eat processed food carbonated sugary drinks all the time like it, it no doubt but even in other books i've read like i read this book called fiber fueled and the author of that book is a gastro oh my god I can never say this word. gastroenterologist thank you it's always a tough <laughs> gastro- and blah, 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 blah. whatever <laughs> he's he even says you know 90 percent of your your plate should always have a bunch of fruits and vegetables like you can even have like your your black beans your be- your your tofu whatever and then you can have that 10 percent of a meat product or a dairy product if you want but make sure you're picking quality places that you're getting this from because it is bad for the environment and it is horrible what they do to some of these animals I mean it is awfully sad when you watch these trucks of pigs just get you know thrown into these machines it's disgusting and I I fully I get it like those were scenes in this show that you can't unsee and I I get it which is why you got to be very careful. And if there's one thing I think we want you to hear from this is that you don't have to be vegan to be healthy. You do have to eat full, whole, not processed foods and be very careful what you buy your meat from. So it kind of takes us to the question of then, well, where do you buy your meat from? You know, like I hear you guys, these stories are disgusting. You know, I don't want to hear any more about like the, the deformed fish and like the sad <laughs> chickens that are like losing their legs and all this stuff because they're stuffed with antibiotics and yet we eat those. So I get it. I, honestly, I told when I texted this to Shoshana, I didn't know where to start either. Um, we have a local organic market here near me. It's called Roots and they sell the clean antibiotic free chicken preservative free hormone free all of it and it's all on the packaging and I think it's just about doing I think it's about doing your research and making sure that if there's a product you normally buy or there's something you normally like to to eat you research that brand Mm -hmm. and make sure that it's coming from places that are clean and if you can't find it maybe it's time to buy a new one Yeah, I mean, you just have to do some digging. Like, I have to do some looking around me to see what stores have meat like that because we don't have a roots. Like, I'm sure maybe Whole Foods has. I just have to go and look, but haven't looked. Mm -hmm. I think a big thing that 
I would want people to take away from watching a show like that and just from learning about different diets is that it it also comes down to what's going to work for you. You know, like if you like meat, that's fine. You can eat it. Just buy it from the right places. If you want to go meat free, maybe this whole thing, you're like, you know what, Julie, I, I am going to be a vegan. Like, I don't want to eat meat. I don't like it anyway. That's totally fine. But again, eat the whole foods then. Don't always have these processed burgers because like Shoshana said, there's all these added oils to it. And now it's higher in fat than it is in protein. And ultimately, if you just don't know where to start, I definitely recommend talking to a registered dietitian talking to a nutrition coach, talking to your doctor, because going into something totally blind, just because you're hearing people say things like, even though you're listening to us say all this right now, and we are trying to help you, we want you guys to make your own choices. We want you to make your own decisions, but we want you to make informed and educated decisions too. Right. And ultimately you have to decide on something that's going to be sustainable for yourself. So you can continue and not feel like, oh, this is really hard for me to maintain every day. Absolutely. Or you're eating food that you don't like. That was right. for me. I did not like, I, 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 I'm not a tofu person. Me neither. <laughs> I, I've tried it. I've tried tofu scramble. I've tried tofu. Um, Ryan makes a really good like teriyaki tofu and the way he eats it makes it look like it's just like this drooling, delicious food. And I just, I can't get, can't by. It. <laughs> I can't do it. I don't like it. Like it has nothing. I'm not judging. I'm, I know it's great, but like, I don't like it. You know, yeah. and nobody would force you to eat anything that you don't like. So don't do that. I want to go to backwards though, to the results that ended up happening at the end of this show. So throughout this show, like we said, they're, they're really pushing the vegan diet. They do this thing called a deck scan which I, I mean, I don't think you can do that <laughs> anywhere except for like a fancy yeah. app or like a fancy gym. Like my gym has an in-body machine, which is the one. Yeah, you so do we. On. Yep. Yes. It's the one you stand on. It'll tell you what is inside. It tells you your bone density. It tells you the yep. calories you burn at rest. It tells you your body fat mass. It tells you your lean mass, all of that stuff. But this does it. And I, it's probably like, a hundred percent accurate, even though, yeah, because we have that at our gym too. And sometimes I wonder like how accurate it is. Cause like every so often I'll read a result and I'm like, mm. I've heard that our in-body machine is like as close to 99% accurate as possible. However, you know, everything has its errors and it's right. like for us women, what if you're on your period or exactly eight before you did it and yeah. Like, didn't or you didn't sleep good there's so many things that affect our body that it's just really hit or miss so they did this thing called is it the dex or dexter some they did some fancy dexa scan. oh the dexa they did the dexa scan and it tells them all the numbers of what's happening inside their body and the biggest thing that they were looking for is weight loss um visceral fat which is the, fat the visceral the fat Yes. And muscle mass. They noticed that the people on the omnivore diet maintained or gained their muscle mass, which is what you wanted. You know, they were working out to get stronger. You want to have more muscle mass than you probably think you do, because in the end, that's what's going to help with aging. That's what's going to help with bone density. A lot of people have this stamina that if they build muscle, they're going to get bulky. Yes. Oh my God. If I could tell you how many times I've done a consultation with somebody and they told me that they want to get toned, but they don't want to be bulky. Like, I cannot even tell you, like, you would have to try so hard to end up bulky. Like, it's not going to happen when you walk into the gym. That's a whole other tangent, but it's a whole other tangent. But what they did want was to see some kind of increase, like five pounds three pounds of muscle mass and the people on the omnivore diet had that, but the people on the vegan diet 
lost the visceral fat, which is the fat around your organs. And you don't want to have a lot of that. You do want that to be pretty low because when you have a high visceral fat level, which is the, again, the fat around your organs, you're more likely to have dis different diseases. So what I got from that then is again, that balance. You need to make sure you're incorporating your protein, however mm -hmm. you choose to get it. And then you need to make sure you're eating a lot of plants, a lot of fruits and vegetables, a lot of nuts, seeds, whole grains, if you can take them, because those are what's going to lower your visceral fat. And then making sure you also have some quality sources of protein is what's going to make sure that you are gaining muscle mass. But then I also wondered though, if their visceral fat was reduced because they were exercising and they weren't before. See, there's that too. So all the groups, I think, except for the, there was two female groups and two male groups. And the two male groups were the ones who were exercising before, except for one of the male twins, the one who was on the vegan diet, he did not really exercise. So he mm -hmm. was eating in a calorie deficit, doing a lot of cardio exercise. Right. And the one who was on the omnivore diet was doing a lot of strength training. So they need to really have them doing the same training and probably consistently before changing the diet so they can get a base. Exactly. As Shoshana and I are both personal trainers. And I think as personal trainers who have seen this, as myself, who's a nutrition coach, Shoshana, who's super into nutrition, I really would just encourage you, and I'm going to say this a bunch of times tonight, but what I really encourage is just incorporate your plants, incorporate your choice of lean, hormone-free, antibiotic-free, non-processed protein, whatever that is for you, beans or meat, um, and incorporate a balanced strength training program that does include cardio, that does include weightlifting, that includes even, you know, like balance training or like yoga in there somehow, because you need the rest as well. And I think all the numbers will fall into the right place. Yeah, I agree with that for sure. It's all about finding balance and what works for you. Because at the end of the day, if you're not doing something that A, you like, and B, that you know is going to work for you, you're not going to keep it up. So that's like yeah. forcing somebody to eat meat because they need that the protein, they need some of the minerals and like vitamin B12 from it, or, you know, forcing someone to go vegan because they don't like the way the animals are treated. And it's like, you can do both. You can buy better quality meat and still eat more vegetables and you can still eat more vegetables and not like the way the animals are treated. Right. That's also like when people say to me at the gym, I don't like to work out and I don't work out because I hate running. It's like, it's so okay, <laughs> well then find what you do like to do and let's do that instead. Exactly. I think another thing too, is to keep in mind that this study was only eight weeks long and it takes a lot more. Yeah. Eight weeks to see. I something. forgot that it was only eight weeks. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there was definitely changes that were done in eight weeks, but even some of the experts in the show will tell you, oh, you know, this was only eight weeks. Yeah. I mean, it takes so much time to one build muscle. So I feel like the muscle change is not represented well within that time frame. And then just any overall change is going to take more than eight weeks to really see a difference. Absolutely. I learned though, that once you start something new, there is this famous day called quitters day. It's the 19th day of whatever you're doing. And it 19. Yes. Huh. The 19th day. I don't know why, but that studies have shown that the 19th day is typically when people feel like they're going to quit. And it's because they're like, Oh, you know, like first week of trying something, they're like, this is amazing. I've been going to the gym <laughs> 30 and I feel great. And then the second week comes along and you're like, okay, like this is pretty hard. <laughs> and then the third week comes and you're like, what am I doing? Like this. Yeah, is that actually makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Which that's, that's interesting to me because 
of the saying how it takes 21 days to build a habit. So you're going to quit three days, two days before that. <laughs> you, you, you don't, because if you listen to this podcast, you better not, but you don't because you have to tell yourself to like, if you know that typically after 19 days, people quit, I feel like you're not going to want to do it. So whether yeah. it's a new diet or a new workout program or just implementing like something tiny, like it doesn't have to be a whole new thing. Like maybe you do want to start incorporating less meat into your diet, or maybe you want to start doing less dairy. I do think a lot of people eat more dairy than they should because For sure. I, I know that I am one of those people as well. Oh, I definitely eat way more dairy than I should. I don't have a problem with dairy though. Like it doesn't make me feel bad, but like every day I have a big yogurt bowl. I have milk in my latte. I have um, cheese and probably two out of three of my meals. So like it is a lot of dairy, but I, I really like dairy. You know what it is that they, they even talk about in the show. Dairy is like, and cheese specifically is like cheese and a whole thing on cheese. It's like romancing. It's like, yes, she did say way. that. <laughs> yes, the best way to get somebody like excited or feeling good is to put out like a brie with crackers. <laughs> Literally, and like every food that I can tell you is like something I crave, or like if I want to have just like something delicious, like it's something with cheese. Yes. That's why almost everybody in the world likes pizza. Oh, yeah. It's carbs and cheese. <laughs> Literally, what is bad about pizza? Nothing. Nothing. I will say, though, some of the vegan cheeses or dairy-free cheeses are not that bad. And I know they get a really I've never bad tried. Vibe. You've never had vegan no, cheese? No, I've never had vegan cheese. So Shoshana knows this. When we went on my bachelorette trip, my sister planned this restaurant. Like that's a Mexican restaurant, but it's like a really well-known re Mexican restaurant in Miami. And everybody was so excited. I love Mexican food. So I was ready to do it. But during this time frame, I was afraid that I was allergic to dairy because I was always getting bloated. I don't know why, but that's what we thought at first. And we didn't know yet. So everywhere we went, I had to make sure they had no dairy, even at this Mexican restaurant. But lo and behold, I went to the allergist, found out it's not dairy. It's my dogs, but whatever. That's so all annoying. That's <laughs> all different story. It's not the dairy. I just have, I'm just lactose intolerant. So I can have certain Greek yogurts, like the Faye Greek yogurt. That doesn't bother my stomach at all. But like other ones. Oh, interesting. Too, yeah, I'm not sure what it is, but when it comes to cheese, melted cheese immediately hurts. So no. I, use, I know unless I take the those lactates with like yeah. the cute, cute cow on the box. Usually that's what I have to do. Gotcha. Okay, but like if I could find like a good tasting like I don't know if they even have vegan brie, but if they have one, I'm willing to try it. But the problem is, I feel like once you've had it, you have really high expectations. So I've tried melting like vegan cheddar cheese and there's some that don't melt. <laughs> and then there's some. Yeah. And that's why they tried making like the liquid cheese. Yeah. Because they were saying that the, like there's like too much starch, I think, in the vegan cheese for it to melt. I'm not sure exactly what it was. Like I said, you know, we're not we're not nutritionists and we're not no. scientists. We didn't come up with this stuff. But as we were watching these episodes, they did have some pretty cool things. And you know what? They sell that cheese at Roots. Oh, they do? They do. This oh is my God. I would definitely try that. This is also not in any way, shape or form, like advertised by any of these places. But listen, no. Roots, <laughs> any of you are listening, I would love to. <laughs> So I think if there's anything you can take from this, it's these things. Incorporate exercise for sure. If you want to see any kind of changes in your body that are for the best, you also have to be moving your body. You know, in order to, to be able to move your body is a blessing in itself. So don't take that for granted because there will be a day that you look back and you either wish you had or you'll be thankful you had. So make sure you're thankful. 
Secondly, incorporate as many plants into your diet as you can. Fruits, vegetables, seeds, nuts, legumes, whole grains, if you can, all of it. And then three, if you choose to eat meat, no judgment. Just make sure you're buying it from quality places. If you don't know what those places are, look it up. Make sure you, you type in where can I find, you know, preservative free, antibiotic free, um, all of it free, clean meat. And I do think you'll notice a difference. I think you'll start to feel better. And if you ever need any help, make sure you reach out to a nutrition coach like myself or somebody who is qualified, like a registered dietitian or a doctor to make sure that they, that you're on the right track. Yeah. I mean, I feel like as long as you do your due diligence and look into it and make sure that you're making the best choices for yourself, you'll be just fine. Absolutely. If you guys want to give it a, a listen or you guys want to watch that show, let us know and send us some messages on what you thought. We just were so intrigued by it because we are nutrition nerds. We love to talk about nutrition and we love to talk about health and fitness. So I would love to know what you guys thought um, on the internet. It says a lot of um, a lot of people gave it about 70% reviews. So I'm just, I'm curious. It really did spark, spark a lot of thoughts in my brain. And I figured the best place to come here and share those thoughts were with you guys, because I, I know you guys trust us to give you what we genuinely think is best for you. Not what's best for just this show. So we hope you guys appreciated that kind of, Cash out of not only that show, but of how to have a quality and knowing that you don't have to be vegan to be healthy, but if you choose to be, that's fine too, but it's way more than just your diet. Now, granted, your diet is pivotal in this whole thing, but it's not just diet. It's sleep, it's exercise, it's stress, it's the whole thing. So We'll come back with more episodes on that. You guys can always check out some of our previous episodes as well on all of those subjects. And thank you, of course, to Shoshana for coming back. She'll probably come back even more. Yay, thanks for having me. <laughs> of course. And we hope you guys have a great day.